Hey, beloved, welcome to another chapter of the book of Sean. It's good to see you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We have an amazing show for you. Uh, we got some headlines for you. A lot going on in the world. People are doing some very interesting things. And, I, and listen, you want to hear my take on some of this. We got some uh, Ask Dr. Sean later on. And my sister Lynette is here. And she has an interesting, look at her, pretty smile. <laughs> interesting story about childhood and growing up not always receiving some of the things that we need. You do know that some of what you don't get at one stage of your life can come back at another stage of your life and cause you regrettable problems. We all have that situation going on in us because none of us got everything we deserved when we were growing up. I don't care how great your parents were. You could have been raised by, I shouldn't use the Hustables as an example, but the television show. <laughs> I'm just, you, you get what I'm trying to say, right? You could, have had, you could have had great parents, but not everybody can give you all of what you need. And my dear sister didn't get everything that she needed and certainly not most of what she deserved. And I can't wait to hear how that affected her. What, is it, what does it do to you, right? Because it does something. And, and the sooner you acknowledge it and the sooner you do your work on it, the sooner you can be healed from it. She's here tonight. I hope to inspire her, give her some insight. But more than that, I hope, I hope to give her space to tell her story so that we can tap into her heart, all right? It's gonna be a great show. I don't know why you still got your shoes on. Take your shoes off, people. Sink into the couch. Hailey's not here. So, Devon, play the bumper. <laughs> yeah, so first of all, shout out to Nicole and to Hailey and to Matthew. Uh, we got a little outbreak going on around here. And so I'm sending my love and my uh, prayers to all of you and to David. I hope all of you get well soon. All right, let's talk about this, because um, last week, two white men, Donald Corsi and Howard Hughes, were arrested in Florida and accused of racially profiling uh, a young black man after they allegedly threw a massive stone through his car window while he was driving in their neighborhood. We got a little video. Let's take a look at this. These are the guys. Right here, buddy. Right here. Tell them what you were doing. Burning out racing through my neighborhood burning out racist in my neighborhood. you not to get out my face i'm not in your get face. face get out of my neighborhood <laughs> I, I mean, lord jesus you know i'm trying it's hard being saved y'all know that right it's hard being saved it's hard to keep your religion when you see stuff like that I mean, if, so the whole neighborhood is yours huh my neighborhood every street on the, in the neighborhood belongs to you every house belongs to you you know what I'm saying? It ain't, it, it, it ain't even your continent. Yeah, I said it. But now it's, your, I, uh, it's, it's enough to just, let me get back to the story. So, so the victim of this, don't show, I don't know why you're showing these guys already. But the victim, the victim, uh, JJ, identified himself in, as JJ on Instagram. Um, so he was very clear about the fact that he was racially profiled, right? And that they, you know, they encountered him because he was a black man driving through their neighborhood. Uh, when they threw the stone through the window, you saw, you know, the, you just saw the video of what happened with that. But here's the interesting thing. This is why I didn't want, you know, don't want you to put these white guys back up. We don't need to see them no more, okay? No more, no more white guys. <laughs> I'm talking about JJ right now. All right. Here's the interesting thing. JJ said in his Instagram post that all he wanted to do was de-escalate the situation so that when the police came, he wouldn't get arrested. Yeah, you heard me. JJ said in his Instagram post that he was concerned about being arrested while he was the victim of these two white guys throwing a brick through his window. And it just, it, it, it blew my mind because that's the kind of country we live in. Where if you are black and you are driving through a certain neighborhood and two white men accuse you of something, right? And you're the victim of, of their harassment, you can be arrested. I can be arrested for that. And the white guys go home and have dinner. And J.J. could have very easily had been in jail that night, even though he had done nothing wrong, except dro drove through the neighborhood. And it's not their neighborhood because they don't own the damn neighborhood, okay? In America, you can drive through any neighborhood you want to. That's, that's how it works in this country. And, but, but the hubris of racism is that these two white guys believe they could throw a brick through his window with no repercussions and go home and have dinner. Thanks be to God, that both of them were charged with felonies. Don't show they photo either. Because <laughs> they done made me mad. I don't want to see their faces. 
Both of them are charged with felonies, felonies that they both deserve, and they should be in jail. Because you don't own the neighborhood, all right? It ain't yours. It belongs to every taxpaying citizen that lives in this country. I can literally live wherever I want, drive wherever I want, eat wherever I want, whatever, shop wherever I want. It ain't yours. Why are white folks always trying to own something that ain't theirs, okay? And let me end this part of the story simply by saying this. What irks me about this is that we see that racism is alive and well in this country. And if we don't do something about racism really soon, America is not going to have a future that is worthy of our children. Because here's the thing I know for sure, and I live long enough to know some things for sure. And this I know for sure. Hate never destroys the victim. It always destroys the host. And as long as America is willing to hate people for being black or brown or gay or being women or trans, as long, and don't tell me America don't hate women. We've already had that discussion. As long as America goes through all these scenarios of hatred, she will never have the future she might have had. Okay, let me, let me move on before I start cussing. Oh, but, but the next story is probably going to make me cuss too. <laughs> Lynette, pray for me, okay? I'm trying really hard to be saved. It's so hard. <laughs> this story is going to make all of us cuss. You ready? Okay, so, so Nativity School in Worcester, Massachusetts, lost its status as a Catholic school over a dispute, dispute rather, with its bishop because the school, Nativity School in Massachusetts, put up a pride in a Black Lives Matter flag. And Bishop Robert McManus said uh, in a decree, because you know the bishop's got a decree, that guy right there, we're going to come back to him. Um, in a decree, uh, he, he said that both of these flags uh, should not be flown in front of the, the Catholic school uh, because it's scandalous and it sends a confusing message to the public about the church's stance about LGBTQ people and Black Lives Matter uh, and, and other social issues. Thankfully, the school's president, who ain't the bishop, but the school's president, Thomas McKinney, said in a statement, that guy, who I like, by the way, he said that the school will appeal the decision of the bishop and will continue to fly both flags. <laughs> Thomas is my kind of guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to fly whatever damn flag I feel like flying. Who are you to tell me? So the school, check this out, check this out. So let's get this right, let's get this right. Listen to this, Lynette, listen to this. So you, so you can't be a Catholic school, you can't be considered a Catholic school if you fly an LGBTQ flag or a Black Lives Matter flag. But you can be a Christian church if you molest children. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so, so, so the flag, the flags mean you can't be Catholic. But y'all, y'all can still be Christian if you are, if you molesting kids. Y'all don't see no contradiction in that. Come on, Catholic people. Come on, Bishop. What's his name? Robert McManus. Come on, Bishop. Put Bishop's picture back up there, John. Yeah. Come on, Bishop. So they can't be Catholic, but you can be Christian. Why y'all messing around with kids? <coughs> huh? And first of all, how is it that the Catholic Church has taken any moral position about Black Lives Matter or LGBTQ people when, when the Catholic Church is morally, you know, deficient? So, so here's what I don't get. When you are morally compromised yourself, you don't have a right to judge anybody. How are you judging people when you're morally compromised yourself? Shouldn't you be trying to find a way to give people grace and mercy? because that's what you need to get over the dumb stuff that you've done? Huh? You live in a glass house and you throwing bricks and stones at other people. I can see if the Catholic Church had no blemish, that they could take a moral position against Black Lives Matter. How you, first of all, how you take a moral position against Black Lives Matter and be a church? And, and for that matter, LGBTQ people and be a church. Doesn't the Bible say that Jesus, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life? The little word they call whosoever, that means everybody. I'm tired of people telling God who he can love. I'm tired of people trying to tell God who God can love. Y'all ain't in a position to. Let's get back to the Catholic Church. Stop judging people. <laughs> what is wrong with y'all? You're in no moral position to judge people. 
especially when you need forgiveness. How are you sitting around judging people and you need forgiveness? Oh my God, what do we call it? That's a name for that. Lynette, I know you know the word for this. When, when we come on, you got to tell me what it is. There's a name for this. When you have the audacity to judge somebody, when you should be asking for forgiveness. I don't know, is that narcissism? I don't know what it is. See, the bishop talks about, and I'm going to end with this. The bishop talks about sending the wrong message. What kind of message is the Catholic Church sending out to women? Women cannot be leaders in the Catholic Church. They can't be priests. They can't be bishops. They can't be uh, cardinals, and they can't be popes. <coughs> but I bet you take the money from women. And I bet you take money from LGBTQ people and black people. So how about all my Catholic friends and Presley Bishop McManus, how about y'all, you know, come back to humility and stop being self-righteous and realize that you are as broken as the rest of us. All right, let me hurry up because I'm running out of time. <clears throat> Let's talk about Tesla because Tesla, we were, talk, we were talking about this in, in the control room earlier. Uh, Tesla, check this out. For all of you rushing out to get Teslas and can't wait for your Tesla to have autopilot um, and for it to be downloaded into your car, you should know that roughly 273 crashes have been attributed and reported uh, to come from Tesla alone and from the autopilot just this year. So you might say, Dr. Sean, 273 crashes, not a lot of crashes, Dr. Sean. Um, but I would say back to you, it is as if you were in one of them. <laughs> 273 may not be a lot for, for other people, but if you were in one of them, it's, it's, it's one too many. But here's, 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 now listen, stay with me. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration showed that Tesla made up 70% of the 392 crashes involving advanced driver systems. So of all the systems where people can have autopilot in their cars, 70% of the crashes were Tesla. Let that sink into your spirit, people. 70, so Elon Musk can make a rocket that can go up to space and come right back down, you know, into the earth. But he can't make a car <laughs> that can drive itself without crashing. Okay? You said, Dr. Sean, you being me. No, I'm not. 70% of the crashes that deal with autopilot are Teslas. It's numbers, people. It ain't, it ain't emotional. It's just facts. I'm not emotional. I was emotional in the last story. This story I'm not emotional about. Okay? 70% is a lot. All right? Here's, here's what I really want to say to y'all, all right? This might be poetic justice. And you know why? Because what's wrong with y'all not wanting to drive your car anymore? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with y'all not wanting to drive your car anymore? Y'all don't want to drive your car anymore? What is wrong with you people? Huh? Are y'all so addicted to technology that you would give Elon Musk control over your car? That whatever system he wants to put in, you so addicted to technology that you don't want to drive anymore. You want to ride, you want to be at the mercy of whatever Elon Musk has put into this program. And then y'all tell me, because I'm I'm coming for you. You ready? Because I love you. <coughs> then y'all tell me that you don't want to take the vaccine, but you let Elon Musk drive your car. Hot grief. <laughs> Let me tell you something, man. I don't want anybody else driving my car, okay? I'll drive my car. Now, I do want my car to stop if, 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 I, if, I'm, if I don't, you know, if I'm distracted. I, I, I'm okay if the car stops on its own. But I don't want nobody driving my car because there's some things human beings have to do for ourselves. And no matter how much technology we get, there's some things we still have to do. Like we still have to say good morning to people. Come on, Dr. Shaw. We still have to sit and eat with people and talk to them to know them. You see, you cannot text somebody constantly and think you know them, okay? Are y'all with me? Did I lose you? Come on back to Dr. Sean, because I love you people. No, 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 you gotta actually talk to somebody to get to know them. You have to, you have to be in their presence and see their face and hear their voice to get to know them. Because there's some things human beings still have to do. And driving our cars is one of them, okay? Because that's just how it is. You mess around, let somebody else drive your car, and you might be one of these 300 and something, 200 and something accidents. Huh? 
I'm just saying, man, don't get mad at me. When it's all said and done, stop ceding control over the things that you were born to handle. That's the shout part right there. Go ahead and lift your hands and just give him some glory because I just blessed you. You know I did. Stop ceding control over things you know you were born to handle. And no matter how much you try to give other people the thing that you would like them to have some say over, the thing that you have to do, only you can do it. Now get back behind the wheel and drive the rest of your life. Teach, Dr. Sean. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, my sister Lynette will be here. Can't wait to hear her journey. And I'm going to let you simmer down after all them good headlines, all right? All right, I know, I know the Catholic one got you upset. But just simmer down, get you some tea or whatever you like to drink, you know what I'm saying? And you, your drinking got to be holy. I'm just saying. I'm going to leave that there. We'll be right back right after this. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. So I'm always fascinated with the twists and turns of someone's life. It's the journey that I'm obsessed with, right? Not the destination. Because where you end up, you know, has a lot of variables. But how you make your way through, that's the thing that summons your greatness. My guest tonight um, has all of that, right? A journey, a destination, a story, and a level of her own greatness. You saw her smiling at the beginning of the show. Now you get to hear her voice. Welcome to the show tonight, Lynette Williams. Hey, Lynette. Hello, hello. How are you? I'm, I'm wonderful. I love your smile. I love your energy. Uh, thank th you. Thank you for being here tonight. Thanks for having me. So you have an interesting story. Before, before we get into the, like the meat of it, you have an interesting story of how you came to find out that you needed to work on some things. Uh, tell me that story, because that, that's where we're going to start. Wow. I was, I was uh, called to sit still. <laughs> In 2012, I, um, I had... Uh, in 2012, I spent some time away, incarcerated, and um, no, 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 I got no, 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 no. We're gonna get to that, but but here's what I heard: that you were you were actually helping women. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, pick that up. Pick that up. Okay. You're gonna ask it again. So you were helping women. <laughs> I was helping. I've been and helping what, women. And, and and what and what happened to let you know? that you had some things to work on. Helping women, helping women regain their sense of self-worth. You know, um, that I thought I built this, 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 this great organization to do that. And that's when I realized that I had so many things that I needed to work on and mm. that I too had experienced trauma. Mm. Mm. What, was, there a, was there a particular conversation that happened or a particular moment or was it overall? It, it was overall, it was a gradual, it was a gradual space. You know, I, I'm kind I'm nurturing in a space like I always want to help people. Mm -hmm. And so I never, I don't think about my needs first. Mm. I think about how I can assist or help in, in, in another situation. And um, so, you know, I wanted to, resilience has been something that I've been strong in. And so my whole thing was how can I, how can I share this resilience with other women that have been trauma impacted. While you yourself were not dealing with your own trauma. And, and so, and so that, that, that I wanted to start here because there's a line in the scripture where, where, the, where the master says, physician heal thyself. Right. And so, and so, and so sometimes before we can go out into the world to bless other people and to make other people better, we have to do that work on ourselves. Right. So that we are free enough not to bump into our issues while we're trying to help other people. So here's where here, here's what I want here's where I want to go I want to go next. All right, I know that most people in life don't know what they want, but they do know what they didn't get. Here's my question: What didn't you get? I didn't get the approval that I needed from family members. Hmm. Mm. And when you say when, when you say approval or validation, what would that look like for you? Validation is is a better word, actually. Um, just a pat on the back, you know, job well done. I see you. You doing you doing well. You you know, single mom. You're really making it happen. You're coming through the struggle um, with your head up, you know, chin up, chest out, shoulders back. And and um and I'm proud of you, you know. 
Mm. No, don't don't stop. I, I I was just responding. Not a lot to ask. <laughs> but you know, you know what's interesting about that. So 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 you were you were you were fighting a good fight. You were winning the fights. You were being brave on the battlefield. You were being courageous at home. You were being uh, uh, the, the as best a version of yourself as you could give the world. And you're telling me in the presence of, of and we'll, we'll keep it generic, right? Family and friends. Um, you never got a pat on the back. You, you, nev you never got a job well done. Or you did not sufficiently hear people say, you're amazing. What you're doing is incredible. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. No, I think stop, people stop, 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 because I just saw something in your face. I saw something in your face. When, when I just said that to you, what, 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 what happened? I, you know, I fell into, just now in that moment, I know people perceive me as strong, and I am strong. Um, and I move, and I move forward, I move, I forge ahead without, without approval or validation. Doesn't mean I don't need it. Mm. So, doesn't mean I wouldn't like to hear it. So, so, so when I said those things to you and your face changed, what happened? Just recognizing that, that, that space and time that I really get it still to today. <laughs> mm. and, and you know, it's interesting. You don't, you don't know how to own it because, because what, what you should be saying is, 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 is that that felt good to hear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Am I right? You, yeah, you're right. And you know what? It, it, you know what I hear? I'm going to tell you what I hear. Okay. I hear family members saying, don't be a crybaby. <laughs> no, 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 no. First of all, don't, don't make me get spiritual. Because <laughs> I'm about to liberate you from all that foolishness, all right? You know, we love our family and all of that, but what works for them may not work for us or work for you. Okay, in this moment right now, what you feel and what you what you give us in terms of your emotion is the way out. You know this work. That's the way out. That's liberation. And, peop and people will give you their bondage because you being in, in bondage just reminds them of how they have mitigated and managed their own bondage. But I want you to be free tonight. You hear what I'm saying to you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's let's go back to it. I mean, I, I hope we haven't lost the moment, but let's go back to it. When I said those words to you and your face changed, it seemed like it, it almost seemed, I got the sense that 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 your soul still needs to hear that. Sure, it does. Yeah, sure, it does. I, you know, Dr. Sean, I think I almost know. At this point in my life, I know that's why I seek to help other people mm. because I freely give it. Mm. I freely give what I what I would love in return. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that that it's so amazing that you said that because I, what I've noticed is that people who are really great at what they do tend to tend to do it from a place of of of, of hoping and wishing at some stage at some point in their life that the world had done this for them. That the world had done this for them, yeah. And I, I, see, I, even now, I see, I see that truth in your face right now, that that you wish the world had given you exactly what you're giving all these women, um, yeah. Yeah, but you know, you have to at a point, for me, you know, you have to resolve. I feel like you have to resolve to moving ahead, moving, you know, moving past this. No, no, of no, no, no. We're not gonna do that tonight. No, we, no, we're not. <laughs> No, no, no. Because, because and I have to tell you why. Because I want I want you to tell this part of the story. Because this this the lack of validation or the lack of affirmation or visibility affects us, affects us. Not not just when we're kids, but also when we are adults. And I know that you had a ten year journey, and you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. You had a ten year yeah. journey. Yeah. And and so and so tell us that part of the story because I think it connects. There's so many parts. There's so many moving parts to that part of the story. Um, I can tell you, I can tell you that just being in that space gave me a lot. It, it afforded me a time that I probably would never have had Name had it space. not happened. Name the space. The space is sitting alone. Mm -hmm. Sitting alone with myself. Where?
<laughs> oh yeah, come on, come on. You you know you know I don't even like to um uh, yeah well sitting alone being in, and being incarcerated is a lonely space. Mm -hmm. Being incarcerated is a lonely space. Thank you for giving me that this space to, to discuss it and to be asked about it. Um, it's a lonely space. And what you do with that space makes the difference with what you do when you come home. Mm. And, um, and I chose to spend a lot of my time alone. Mm. I spent a lot of that time alone. Um, you know, I made appointments with myself. You know, I would go to the gym, I would work out, I would teach gym classes, I would teach writing classes, because those are the things that that got me through and studying religion and, um, you know, Christianity and Islam, all of those things got me through. Mm -hmm. So I created curriculums for myself, you know, that 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 um, that ate away at my time. Yeah. yeah and, and you, because. You you know, you know, you know. I'm sorry to jump in, but I, I just want to make sure everybody can track where we are in the conversation. And, and the re and the reason I, I pushed you to sort of name it right was because I want people to see what happens when we don't give people what they're desperately needing emotionally and psychologically, right? And 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 you and you 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 connect the dots for me. How is it? How is the fact that you didn't receive validation for most of your life? connected to how you ended up in prison for 10 years how, mm -hmm. how are those things connected when you when you're not you know it's just i'll tell you specifically it it's connected in you're always going to seek what you need mm. you're always going to seek what you need and what you're not getting you're doing good keep going and so in not knowing what it would take to receive that mm -hmm. validation from mm -hmm. another, you know, from family members or friends, you you just keep going in a direction that you probably would not have gone mm -hmm. um, had you had it. Mm -hmm. Chasing after someone to, to, to make you feel worthy, chasing after to be seen, chasing after uh, to be present, to be important, to be significant. Am I am I getting this right? Yeah, you're getting there. Yeah, you're there. Yeah, you're there. yeah, yeah. L listen, yeah. listen. Let just like just like look at me. Like I'm I'm doing it. This is this is great, right? <laughs> you know? Right. And um, so and you don't get that. So it's it's great. Yeah. You 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 determine that it's great, and you determine what you need to do in order to continue greatness and you make mistakes when you don't have somebody to say that you are great mm. just as you are mm. you are enough you're mm. enough mm. And, and and yet that's it don't, don't don't stop fighting what's coming out you let that out lynette you hear me <laughs> let it out let it out that's it <laughs> let it out we will fix your makeup during the break i promise okay <laughs> We'll fix your makeup during the break, but you gotta let that out, cause this is liberation. This is you. This is you. You're absolutely this right. This is you healing you. You are absolutely right, and you know I tell you while I was away, I actually made appointments to cry. You know, cause you can't walk around just letting it out. Let's be <laughs> let's be clear. You know, <laughs> don't test me. No. <laughs> so I would actually make appointments with myself to cry, cause. Um, yeah, you know, I would just, I would get under the covers and pull the covers over my head and okay. And all I had to do, it, did, it only took a second because you know. <laughs> but you know, Lynette, Lynette, hold on a second. Cause I, and I, I gotta take this break. But here's what I would give you right away in, in this moment. This isn't crying. This is you giving yourself permission to be replenished. This is you honoring your story with your tears. This is you learning that the woman you were and the girl you used to be, since nobody else cried for her, mm -hmm. now you are strong enough to give her the tears that she deserved when she was broken in sacred places. That's what you're doing tonight. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Sean. <laughs> hold, hold that thought. Hold that thought. We're, okay. Hold that thought. <laughs> we're we're going to take this break, okay? Because um, I got more questions. 
and the story even gets better. Listen, I love this. We'll be right back right after this. Welcome back, everybody. I'm talking to my sister, Lynette. Lynette, um, first of all, you're doing great, by the way. And, and, and so, <laughs> no, you are. I mean, because I'm sure this is a little unsettling and, and, you know, it's probably a little more emotional than you thought it would be. Um, but that's what I love about it is that it's, you know, so many women watching right now are being liberated watching you be liberated. Um, there's, 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 there's a great line in, in something that I read where someone asked the question, uh, who will cry for the little girl? And, and, and they go around and, and no one, no one, no one wants. To, and, then, and then the story gets back to its base and says, it's the woman that she becomes that will ultimately have to cry for the girl she used to be. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And I, you know, and I love this little girl. Mm. And I, you know, it, I realized that um, I really got in touch with the little girl inside me. So you even referring to the little girl is is so is so is so relevant um, because that's how I refer to that part of me that needs that validation mm. is the little girl. Somebody's got to hug me. Somebody's got to hug that little girl, you know. Mm. And my dad um, passing. <sighs> Before I came home was a big thing for me. That was a big deal. What did so, that, what, what, what exactly did that do to you or mean to you? Well, I, I know he missed his little girl and um, nobody could relate to me the way my dad could relate to me. Mm. Mm. And so I missed that. Yeah, it's not, listen, it's, it's a beautiful thing to see a daughter love her dad and miss her dad. So now I honor you. I appreciate you giving us access to that. Um, I know I know that you're a mom, right? You're a mom. And, yes. And, and, and so what I'm wondering is how has the absence of validation and approval and celebration, celebration most of all, how, how has that affected how you parent? Uh, you know, well, that, that's a good question. You know, you know, some people, some people are, it affected me in a, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. It affected me in a positive way. It's, you know, it's me constantly, you know, validating and um, encouraging and praising and just do your best, be your best, whatever your best is, 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 is that's all I want is your best mm. it's everything and that's everything mm. Mm. so so you what i hear you saying is that you sort of responded to what you didn't get as a child in your parenting by being um, overly affirmative validating and celebrating and affirming who your children are did i get that right yes potentially now now, now you do know that there's some danger in that right Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> you know, hindsight, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? <laughs> okay. You're perfect. I'm, I, I'm so glad you said that. Tell me what uh, the yeah. danger of that is. Well, bef before 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 we go into that, can I just yeah. can I just touch on a point that it it I want I want I want it to be clear that I understand it doesn't mean that I was that I would that I wasn't loved. I was definitely loved. But the, the language that was used to love me as a child um, was not one that I clearly understood. Yeah. No, and, that, and, and, and let, let me respond to that and say that's an important distinction because people can love you and still not be able to translate, to communicate their celebration and validation of you in a way that you understand. So, so I'm, I'm glad you said that because we're, we're not tonight talking about a family that didn't love you, people that didn't care about you. We're not talking about that at all. We're talking about the opposite right. of that. We're talking about what happens when your family does love you and cares about you, but they're not good at communicating or celebrating some of the things you're doing. Is that what we're talking about? We're close. We're in that ballpark there. <laughs> but, 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 but hold on, hold on. But take me closer. But, but, so tell me, okay. what, tell me what we're talking about then. 
Well, you know, I got the support that I needed to explore, you know, different aspects of life. I definitely got the support. And and I and I guess that was to be the validation. There was no you're uh, you're great. I think I don't want to get into the I don't want to get into my family members' headspace. So let me just stay focused on 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 me. Um, again, I, it, it all goes back to the language because there's no way I can ever sit and and make anybody think that I wasn't loved because I definitely was. And it, it's it's the language that was spoken. You know, you know what's interesting about this, and and then, and then, then I want to get back to your children um, before I run out of time. I'm about to run out of time. Is that whenever I have people on and we have conversations like this, there's always this impetus and need in them to defend their family. They they all they all they always have to come on, and they'll 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 tell their truth, and then they'll and then they'll pivot right back to to defending their families, right? And here, here's what I've said to some, someone recently, and I want to say it to you. Just because you have a particular experience and opinion about your experience does not mean that you need to defend or that you're even condemning your family because it's your perspective. It's what you understand. It's what you could, 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 uh, could hear or not hear. So, so I always try to push people, and we can get off this, but I always try to push people is speak your truth. You don't need to defend anybody or make anybody, you know, feel palatable with the truth right. that you're speaking. You've done both tonight, which I celebrate. Now, let's get back to your kids before I let you go. All right. Okay. And that is tell me the negative side of always validating, always affirming, always celebrating. Because we got to make sure we get this in. OK, when you're when you're always doing that, you're giving them a false sense of reality. And, 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 and it can cause them to buy into that reality and, and create, an, um, I want to say, an instability. Mm. Yes. yes. Not good. Not good. And if I can add, and I, and I am, <laughs> <laughs> you, you also create um, a false sense of how other people will relate to them and talk to them. Other people are not going to celebrate them all the time and validate them all the time, right? They, they... Well, that be... Go ahead. Well, that being the case, which is why I, that was my reason for choosing to. Because you're not going to get it outside of the home because people don't, outside of the home, people don't care for the most part, I would say. If you do it with moderation, if you do it with balance, right? If you do it with a sense of perspective. But if you do it in a response to what, what, what you didn't get as a kid, so you're overly affirming, you have the potential to create little monsters, right? <laughs> right? Who walk around like, oh, I, 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 I know it's about me because my mama told me X, Y, and Z. My daddy told me X, Y, and Z. You know, there's, 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 there's always, a, there's always a, 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 counter, a counteraction whenever we are trying to compensate or overcompensate for something. I, I, I got to let you go, but I want to end with this, all right? Um, I, I, I'm clear about what you didn't get when you were younger. I'm clear about what you didn't get at a certain stage of your life. But what I want you to focus on is what you want now and not what you didn't get. Because whatever you didn't get, somebody bigger and larger and greater than you that made you knew that you could make it without that. Knew that you could become who you are even in the absence of what you didn't get and knew that had you had gotten everything that you wanted, you wouldn't be the woman that you are now. So sometimes it's what you didn't get that makes you pull from places you would have never tapped into had you had gotten what you prayed for. And so in this stage of your life, my invitation to you and to me and to everybody watching is focus on what you want. And so here's my question. If you got every, and this is a rhetorical question. If you got everything you have never got, had gotten if you got everything nobody ever gave you, what would you still want? If you got all the validation you didn't get, all the celebration you didn't get, all the affirmation you didn't get, what would you still want? And I'm saying whatever the answer to that is, that needs to be the focus of your life for the next 10 years. Not making up for what you didn't get, but acting as if you got everything that you didn't get, now what do I want? That's where the greatness is in you. And that's where I think you need to focus and put your, your work, your hard work, your love and your joy into. Uh, Lynette, thank you for being on the show tonight. Thank you for having me.
Yeah, I see your wheels turning. I, I don't, yeah. I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't have time to to figure out what you were saying because I got to take right. this break. All right, we'll be right back right after this. <laughs> listen, listen. You know, first, welcome back, everybody. But, but listen. You know, the need for validation and the need for affirmation is a wonderful thing, and getting it is a wonderful thing. But too much of it can destroy you. It can make you feel entitled. It can make you desperate. And in the case of my sister tonight, it can drive you to do things where you end up in places you were never supposed to be. You know, sometimes we just have to trust the journey that we're on. We have to trust the life that we're living. And I know, even in my own life, I know there's some things I wish I had gotten or received, but I didn't. And the challenge is to accept that and to see how that blessed you. Because there's a blessing even in the things you didn't get. And even in the moments that you were denied. You got something out of it. Focus on what you got out of it, what it taught you, how it blessed you, as opposed to constantly lusting and reaching for the thing that nobody wanted to give you. Because you end up never doing the thing that you were born to do. All right, let's do some Ask Dr. Sean. Hand in honor of Hailey, who's not here. Play the bumper, people. You guys always send me great videos. This one is no different. Let's take a look at it. Hey, Dr. Sean, it's Mitch, creator of Bro Chat. I need some advice. What do you say to someone that tells you it's too late to start something new? I say, shut the hell up. <laughs> it's never too late to start something new. Okay, never too late to start something new. Opportunity never gets old. That's why in Greek mythology, the Greek god for opportunity is always a baby. You, you never see opportunity, the Greek god opportunity, as an adult because the message that the Greeks wanted to send to the world is that opportunity never gets old. She's always a baby. It's never too late. Whenever people say that to you, they're projecting their mess, their drama on your dream. And it's your responsibility not to allow people to project their opinions on your, on your destiny, on your future. It's not too late to start over. It's not too late to try something new. I'll tell you when it's too late. When you're dead. And when you're dead, then it's probably too late. Incapacitated, probably too late. How about we not focus on when it's too late and we just focus on the thing we wish we were doing? You know what I'm saying? Because life is short. I mean, you, you, you're 16, and then, and then you snap your finger, and you're 25, and then you're, then you're 35. Two snaps later, you're 47. Come on. Three slaps after that, you're, 50, you're 56 years old. Life is fast. It is moving. And you don't have time to sit around and, and ask yourself or talk yourself out of what it is you're trying to do because somebody tells you that it's too late. It's not too late to fall in love. It's not too late to start a business. not too late to get your degree. How many stories have I done of people who went back to school at 80-something years old, 90-something years old, and got their degree? You see, it's not about the timing of the thing. It's about your willingness and your passion to get the thing done. And if you're passionate and if you're ready, then go for it. Because sometimes the thing we want to do is the right thing to do. We're just not in the right season to get it done. There's some things you wanted to do when you were 20 that you were not disciplined enough at 20 to do it. You were not focused at 30 to get it done. You, you were not committed at 17 to, to, to do that. But now you are. You lived a little, died a little, cried a little, little, come back from the dead a little, had your heart broken a little, you lied a little, you betrayed a little, you've been lied to a little, you have been betrayed a little. You got all this mix of content in you ready to accomplish the thing that you wanted to do when you were 20, that you wanted to do when you were 15, but you're ready to do now. So do it. And let everybody else watch you do it. And then let them ask themselves why they are not doing the thing that they most want to do, hiding behind age or the ticking of time. No, you, you stick your neck out there and you tell hell and evil and everything trying to stop you be damned. I am going to do this and I'm going to do it now. And who I am, what age I am, whatever I am, I'm going to put all of it and use all of it to accomplish this thing because this is what I must do. Yeah, that's my answer to that. All right, somebody um, DM me this question. No, let, let, I'm going to read the question and then I'll answer right after. 
I was a stripper for five years and quit because I didn't like the stigma attached to it. My friends constantly throw my past in my face and say I will have a hard time being successful because of it. How do I convince my friends that I have changed? We'll answer that question right after this break. Welcome back, everybody. So when, when we took our break, I read this question. I was a stripper for five years, and I quit because I don't like the stigma attached to it. My friends constantly throw my past in my face and say I will have a hard time being successful because of it. How do I convince my friends that I have changed? All right, thank you for the question. You may not like the answer, but here it is. Stop wasting your life trying to convince your friends that you've changed, okay? And how about this? You ready for this? Because this, you ain't going to see this one coming. How about, how about we not feel bad about what we've done? How about we not, unless we've hurt someone? And, and, and stripping ain't hurting nobody. In fact, you're making a lot of people happy. <laughs> how about we not get caught up in other people's opinions about what it is we've done or who we are? If you haven't hurt anybody, if you've not wounded anybody, and you just had an off-color job or an off-color opinion or an off-color experience that most people wouldn't approve of, let them have their opinion of it and let your opinion be what it ought to be, which is, this is what I did, this is who I was, this is what I felt I needed to do, and I'm not ashamed of it. I'm tired of people being ashamed of themselves. Now, you should be ashamed of your mistakes. You should be ashamed of hurting people. But making a decision to do something that's sort of out the box, you shouldn't be ashamed of that. And your so-called friends shouldn't make you feel ashamed of that. Let me tell you something. It, will, will it be hard for you to find a job because you, were the stigma, because you have a stigma? It depends on the job. You may mess around and luck up on a job where being a former stripper it's an asset and a blessing and not a liability. I'm, here's the point I'm making. Stop letting people make you feel bad about you, about either what you decided to do or what you had to do, what you loved to do, even what you no longer want to do. It's fine to change your mind. It's, fi it's fine for me to change my mind, but you ain't going to make me feel bad about what I had to do or what I wanted to do just because it doesn't comport or fit into your view of the world. I have no advice for you on how you can convince your friends of something because I have no interest in you convincing your friends of a damn thing. Now you stop living your life trying to convince them of something. When you are convinced, when you are settled, when you are at home in your own skin and in your own story, you won't have a need to convince anybody of anything. And whatever you're trying to convince them of, when you're at home in your own truth and you're, and you're comfortable with it, you, you embrace who you are and what you've done, they will look at you and be able to tell that you've transformed. You won't have to say a word. But as long as you feel guilt-ridden and as long as you feel bad about something, listen, there'll always be this, 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 this duality where you're free but not free, where you're healed but not healed, where you're better but not better. Let me give you some scripture. You ready? <laughs> the Apostle Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Now, Paul and I, we don't always get along because he's got a lot of problems. But that verse I like. I am what I am by the grace of God. And it took grace to get me out of that and to get me here. And that's what you need to understand about your journey. I'm glad you've changed if that's what you wanted to do. I'm glad you've transformed if that's what you wanted to do. And now that you have transformed and you have changed, now I want you to not live in denial of what you used to be. I want you to be able to look back at your past and say, I was what I was by the grace of God. And I am what I am by the same grace that keeps me. That's what I want for you. Okay? All right. Do we have another video? Do we have another video? I think we do. All right. Let's take a look at this video. Hey, Dr. Sean. My name is Nick and I have a question. Do you think it's selfish to put yourself first? No, <laughs> he's an easy one. No, it's not selfish to put yourself first. It's selfish to only think about yourself. You get the difference? Putting yourself first means that I count the cost of what this is going to mean for me, cost me, um, extract from me, do to, do to me. Nothing wrong with that. Always thinking about yourself and never thinking about other people is where you run into selfishness. 
So I'm going to consider what, what this is going to mean for me, but I'm also I'm going to consider that in conversation with what it's going to mean for you. All right? It's never selfish to think about yourself. You have to do that. Because most of the people in this world will, won't ever get to the point where they think about you sufficiently. It's your job to do it. It's not your job to worry about me. That's my job, okay? It's not your job to bless me. That's my job. It's not your job to celebrate me. That's my job. I clap for Sean. You follow what I'm saying? I, I give me a standing ovation every single day because that's my job. Now, it becomes selfish when that's all I think about. So learn how to clap for yourself and care about other people. Learn how to love and hug yourself and also have empathy for other people. It's not either or, it's both. And if you, if you master both of those things together, you'll live a great life. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in tonight. Thank you, Lynette, for being on the show. Validate each other. Tell each other how much you love each other and how great people are, because people need to hear it, all right? People need to hear that you care about them, and they need to hear that they're winning even when they feel like they're losing. You guys, I'll see you soon. We got our end of the week show coming up, one of my favorite shows. Y'all be good to each other, okay? Because, whether you know it or not, I love you. <laughs>